If there's one thing I hate to be, it's missing. Whether it's missing my shot and Gears of War Reloaded, missing batteries for my billiards calculator, or missing my mom, missing always means trouble. And are we ever in trouble today? We're going to do five hard find the missing number puzzles. If you can solve all five, you might want to consider becoming a detective, and I'd be happy to hire you to find all of my missing marbles. You can pause the video and try to solve them now. We'll go through one by one and I'll give a hint for each puzzle. You might think that this one doesn't look like a find the missing number puzzle, but it's a hint to say that the puzzle is close enough for me to include it in this video. Okay, puzzle number one. This one's a classic and I believe I've discussed exactly this puzzle in a previous video. What an awkward sequence. It goes up by ones, then by three, two, two, 769? What is going on here? The differences between consecutive terms definitely don't suggest anything obvious here, and in fact, it's a mistake to focus too much on the term differences in this case. Your hint for this puzzle is that this sequence is actually constant. Do you have the answer? I'll tell you now, the answer is 1, 2, one. The key is that these numbers are all the same. They're all actually 16, but written in different bases. It's perhaps a bit cheap to not indicate that these numbers are written in different bases, since typically that's included in notation if we're using multiple bases at once, so it might not be to everybody's liking, but I think it's a pretty cute puzzle. If the terms were written out like this, of course, it'd be straightforward to find their numerical value values, and we'd see that they all have a value of 16, which would make it pretty obvious what this term has to be. Now allow me to give a more full explanation of how we get 1 to 1 for this puzzle. Some of the clues you might have been able to notice is that, again, the differences between consecutive terms are very awkward. Of course, that tells us we're going to have to think a bit outside of the box, and it may suggest that these numbers actually don't represent the values that it looks like they do. What appear to be powers of 10 may also get us thinking about our base system. And if you're lucky, thinking about these numbers potentially representing something different than you might think at first, in combination with all these ones and zeros at the end of the sequence, you might start to think about base 2. If this was a number written in base 2, then this would represent zero copies of 1, this would be zero copies of 2 to the 1, zero copies of 2 squared, zero copies of 2 cubed, and one copy of 2 to the power 4, which we know is 16. If this is 16 in base 2, well, this happens to be 16 in base 4, because it's zero copies of 1, zero copies of 4, and one copy of 4 squared, which is 16. So we realize it might be that the base is increasing from right to left. Indeed, all the way over here would be base 16. And in base 16, this is how you write 16. And at this point, we'd probably be fully convinced. You can verify that's 16 in base 15, that's 16 in base 14, and so on down the line. This then, the missing term, must be 16 in base 3. The biggest power of 3 that fits in 16 is 9, and exactly one copy of 9 fits into 16. There's then two copies of 3 that can fit in, and a single unit left over. That's 1 plus 6 plus 9, which is indeed 16, so that, 1 to 1, is the missing term. We've got one more slightly gimmicky puzzle in today's bunch of 5. What is the missing term in this sequence? Some of you might see what's going on here instantly but for many of you, it's far from obvious. If you look at it enough, though, you may recognize some familiar shapes. Before I make it obvious, if you need a hint, the hint is symmetry. All right, now giving it away, yes, would you look at that. Each figure is just a numeral reflected across a vertical axis and duplicated. One, two, three, five, six, 7. So the missing figure here should be 4, 
and then reflected across a vertical axis, just like that. Or like this, depending on how you write your fours. This is a fun puzzle to present to a class or any group really, but pro tip, if you have to write out these figures yourself to present the puzzle, you're gonna have to disguise how you're writing them. Of course, the easiest way to do it would be to just write the figures forwards and backwards, but this will make it obvious what you're doing. And it also isn't going to look very good. Instead, you need to know what the figures would look like if you drew them perfectly and try to draw that in a way that obscures the construction. You can also adjust your handwriting to make it a little less obvious. For example, you might write your fours like this, but personally, I find that the four really sticks out in this figure. So you could change how you write four to this, which I think is less obvious. Then you could include that in the puzzle and maybe make the sixes the missing figure, since they're kind of obvious also. If I were presenting this puzzle, I also wouldn't be writing my ones like this, because that's more obvious than necessary that it's two ones. Instead, I'd think about writing my ones like that, and then if we reflect it and duplicate it, it would look like that. So then when I actually go to present the puzzle, if I'm gonna write out the figures, I can just write the first shape, like that. To write the twos, we can essentially just draw a heart and then give it a base. For the threes, forget about the curly three and instead use what I call the handsome three. Imagine duplicating this and reflecting it and then you get a shape like that. So then if I'm presenting the puzzle, I can draw this figure in a very awkward and non-obvious way like this, and it looks like a keyhole. For the fours, I can make it kind of like an H before I add that necessary middle line on top. The fives you can draw in this awkward sort of way that totally obfuscates what you're doing. You can leave the sixes as the mystery and then draw the sevens just as a triangle. If you present the puzzle like this, then writing out the figures is not going to give away what you're doing and perhaps is going to make it all the more baffling for an audience. Those first two puzzles sure were some sweet treats. But you know what's sweeter than fun puzzles and Halloween candy? That's right, it's the new Trick or Treat collection available exclusively on my math fashion store, mathshin.com. Our new limited Halloween design features all sorts of great products with this beautiful Halloween inspired design of three trick or treaters dressed up as famous mathematicians, Paul Erdish, Leonard Euler, and Emmy Noether. You can get it on a t-shirt, a cozy fall sweater, a hoodie, whatever you like. Link in the description and pin comment mathshin.com. Check out the new Trick or Treat collection. The next puzzle comes from one of the great puzzle inventors of all time, who I'd actually never heard of until researching for this video. Some of the well-known puzzlers I'm familiar with are Henry Dudney and, of course, Sam Lloyd. And in fact, the Japanese puzzle master Nobuyuki Yoshigahara received the Sam Lloyd Award in 2003. He also created the wildly successful sliding block puzzle game Rush Hour. But what he considered his masterpiece was this little puzzle asking us to find the missing number. This one's not too difficult, so please take a moment and try to solve it. If you want a hint, my hint is digits. Do you have an answer? The correct answer to the puzzle is 12. Probably the easiest way to see the solution to this one is focusing on the top few pieces of this tree. When we look at these numbers, it's impossible to not think about nines. All of these are multiples of nine. With nine on the brain, we might notice that these two digits add to nine and these nines add to 18. And oh look, nine plus 18, that's 27. And wait a minute, these digits also add to nine and so do these. Nine plus nine is 18. So if we spend enough time thinking about the nines up here, you're probably gonna notice that digit sum property, which you can then test over here. Eight plus one is nine, three plus nine is 12, 9 plus 12 is 21. At this point, the code is cracked. How do we find the missing number? Well, it's just the sum of the digit sums of the two numbers above it. 2 plus 1 is 3, 3 plus 6 is 9, 3 plus 9 is 12. And we can see that that agrees with this number. 1 plus 2 is 3, 2 plus 8 is 10, 3 plus 10 is 13, and again, it's confirmed down here. This next one is pretty hard. You can try to solve it, but if you want, I'll give you a big 
hint. The big hint is this. It's a very similar puzzle that has been completed. Take a look at that. Now back to the bigger puzzle. Do you have an answer? We've got two missing numbers for this one. All right, the correct answer is three and one. You might spend a lot of time trying to focus on the single numbers here, but any patterns you look for will quickly fall apart. Sums of the numbers in rows or columns are not consistent. The difference between numbers is not consistent. Up four, down four, up eight, down seven, up one. What does any of that mean? So you might start to look at chunks bigger than one. You might look at two numbers at a time, two, two. If we look at these as two digit numbers, you may notice, huh, this goes 15, 19, that's up four, 19, 23, that's up four. If you look down here, you would see a jump of 10, 58 to 68, and another jump of 10, 68 to 78. You'll see a similar thing in this row and this one. So to describe the pattern simply, the middle number is just halfway between the two numbers on the left and right. So looking at this to find the first missing number, 40 plus 30 is 70, so the middle number would be half of 70 or 35, so this has to be 3. Same thing over here, 29 plus 13 is 42, so halfway between would be half of 42, which is 21. This last puzzle has a bit more of a definitive math problem feel than cute little puzzle feel, but I think it's a great puzzle nonetheless. There are five points on a line. Each distance between pairs of points is measured and put in a list from least to greatest. Here is that list, and we see our objective is to find this one missing number in that list. You can pause now to try to solve it. If you keep watching, I'm going to go into some light hints and intro explanation as we get into that full solution. One of the first things you might wonder is if any distances between points were duplicates and maybe only included once in the list. But then if you know combinatorics, you know that if there are five points and we're picking two of them to measure a distance, there's only 10 ways to do that. This is read as five choose two. This says there are 10 ways to choose two points from a collection of five. So if we measured the distances between every pair of points, that would be exactly 10 distances. And we see there are exactly 10 items in the list. Hence, every single distance is unique with the potential exception of this missing one. So the distance between every pair of points is on this list. None have been excluded because they're duplicates. The list was put in order from least to greatest, so we know this last number is the greatest distance between any two points. Making a picture is always helpful, so let's go ahead and start doing that. Here's a line, and since we know the greatest distance between two points on the line is 15, we can go ahead and put one point here and put another point 15 units away over here. Let's say we call this first point A and what's basically the last point E. Somewhere on this line are the remaining three points. And another thing we know is that if we cut the line at any of these points, maybe there's a point B right here and we cut the line right there, that splits the line into two pieces, which must add together to that total greatest distance of 15. Since the distance from A to E is 15, the distance AB plus the distance BE must be 15. And both of those smaller parts have distances that have to be on the list, because remember, the list contains the distances between every pair of points. Now, when we look on the list, we see two and 13, which add to produce 15, just like a pair of distances in this situation would need to. So we'll conclude the second point B must in fact be right here, two units away from A, giving us that distance of two, and then from B to E, we get that distance of 13. Looking again at the list, we also have three and 12, which add to 15. We might be tempted then to put the point C three units away from A, but then it would have a distance of one with B, and we know that one isn't on our list, so C can't possibly go there. Let's instead then put the point C three units away from E, 
one, two, three. Here is our point C, and there we have a distance of three, just like we need for our list. And from C to A, we have that distance of 12. Also, the distance from B to C is 10. So we're in good shape right now. We just need one more point. We haven't accounted for this distance of four yet. So we might consider where can we place this point to create that distance of four so that everything else will work out also. We can't place the point four units from A, because if it's four units from A, then it's two units from B. But we know there's only one pair of points that can have a distance of two, and that's A and B. We also can't put the point four units from B, because if we do that, it will have a distance of six with A, that's fine because we do need a distance of six. The problem is that it would also have a distance of six with C, but we know that only one six occurs in the distances. All right, only a couple other possibilities left. It can't be four units from E because if it's four units from E, then it's only one unit from C. And we know that one does not occur in the list. Thus, it must be four units away from C. So one, two, three, four, this should be where that point D is located. At this point, you can verify that all of the distances in the list are accounted for exactly once between various pairs of points in our collection. And if you tabulate all the distances, you'll find that the one missing distance is the distance between A and D, which happens to be eight. So the missing term is eight. Did you get that one correct? And how'd you do on all of these puzzles overall? Which one was your favorite? Which one did you hate the most? Let me know in the comments. I think they're all pretty good, but I can definitely understand how some people might take issue with the first one being a little bit deceptive since nothing communicates the fact that the numbers are written in different bases. But then again, the point of a puzzle is to delight and surprise and force you to think a bit outside of the box. Thanks for watching, and again, if you're looking for some cozy fall holiday swag, check out the new Halloween line of clothes on Mastion.com. I've been rocking this oversized Halloween sweater lately. It is super comfortable, and I highly recommend it. Link in the description and the pinned comment. And be sure to subscribe for more of the swankiest, math videos on the internet. I'm unstable, I'm feeling hard to keep the cable cut and unsought the table. If Texas instruments don't reply, I think this time it might be fatal. I wish to sell my own fake, cause I'm jaded. Hate the odds that I calculated. Press and pull and pray and push it all the way through the whole blue planet faded. Psychosomatic habits, why you're so, so.